This video is sponsored by Whipster. Hey, what's up, ladies and gentlemen? I'm Ines and today I will be showing you how to create floating candles like in Harry Potter. And it also makes it a little cozier for Christmas. By the way, Merry Christmas up front. I hope you have a great time. Uh, but we will be seeing how to create this effect in Adobe After Effects. If you want, you can follow along with the exact same footage as me. We'll put a link in the description below. All right, I hope you enjoyed that little intro. And like I said, in this video, we'll see how to create really cool floating candles like in the movies of Harry Potter. And yeah, it also kind of makes it a little bit cooler for Christmas. By the way, what do you think of my little Christmas tree? Doesn't it look cute? Oh. I even put lights in it. Technically, I didn't do it. My girlfriend made this Christmas tree so beautiful. So kudos to her. Oh, I'm breaking it. I should put it back. Oh, don't tell her, please. Okay, so <laughs> like I said, today we're going to see how to create awesome floating candles in Adobe After Effects, just like Harry Potter. And speaking of awesome, today's video sponsor, Whipster, is a really awesome tool for any kind of video producer. If you work with clients, if you have a YouTube channel or whatever you're doing with a video and you have someone that has to review your work. So Whipster is a way to get streamlined feedback. You can upload your video and share it with your client for feedback and approval. You can highlight and leave pinpointed feedback at specific time frames in your video. And the really cool part is that you have a Whipster review panel with the Adobe extension, which means that you can use it in Adobe After Effects or Premiere Pro to instantly upload your video through the software, which makes everything a lot easier. The media library also allows you to keep everything organized and accessible. And you can see that the layout is very clean and very straightforward. Another cool feature of Whipster is that you have a simplified analytics way called Pulse. You can share your video through YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and a few other ones. And then Whipster combines the analytics of every single video that is published on these websites and give you a quick visual health score on how it's landed. And also a really cool thing is if you want to try out Whipster for free, you get a 14 day trial period. So definitely go and test it out. It's a really awesome tool. It simplified my work process on how I work with sponsorships and how I work with clients. I can easily send them my video now with some time frames that I pinpointed and then they send me some feedback that I can easily read and keeps everything structured because it gets really hard and chaotic if you do everything through email. So again, link in the description, check it out and then let's continue with the tutorial. All right, so here I am in Adobe After Effects. I'm in the import screen. Uh, if you wanna work with the exact same footage as me, uh, you can use my footage right here. I will also put a link in the description so you can download that for free. Uh, so I have a footage video file and I have my candle right here. So I have a render. And then I have my candle right here, which is an image sequence uh, with, an alpha, with an alpha background. So you click on the first one, you go PNG sequence, make sure that is checked on and import that. After importing, you can right click, interpret footage main and change the assume this frame rate to 24 and click OK. Then we can import the footage. And there we go. So I'm going to drag my footage into a new composition and you can see that I'm talking right here on a tripod. And now what you can do is I'm just going to do for like six seconds as we don't need all this time. It's easier to work a little bit faster. So what I will do now is I will make this layer a 3D layer and I'm going to add a camera to my scene. So I'm going to use new camera and maybe choose like a 24 millimeter and click OK. So now that it created a camera, we have a 3D scene with our footage being a 3D layer. We can press P on the keyboard and really push it into Z space. Maybe go for like 7000. And then we want to scale it up, filling up the screen again. 
So nothing really has changed, but you will see in a few seconds that just pushing your image a little bit more into 3D space will give that kind of parallax effect with the candles that we're going to import right now. So right here we have the candle layer. What I will do is bring this into a new composition. And actually I don't really like the candle color um, because I was using a green screen. I actually recorded the candle very simply. I had my green screen behind a candle and then I also lit my green screen with a green green light which is actually the Falcon Eyes T12 which is a really cool light when you don't want to use any kind of gels or stuff like that. You can simply use the preset colors and in this case I used a green light to make my green screen even greener and that will make my key a lot easier. So. Um, I didn't set it up super professionally so you can see that right here my candle kind of has a magenta cast so what I'll do is introduce a little bit of green again so it's already keyed out you don't have to worry about that but you can see that the fire kind of looks very natural so that's really cool uh, and it's also very hard to key actually so we can go to effect color correction and apply a curves effect right here and I'm going into the green channel and just boost it a little bit and then you will see that it kind of neutralizes the color so before and after maybe it's a little bit too much so you don't have to exaggerate with this and then you can go into the RGB and just boost the color a little bit to make it a little bit wider and there we have our candle so next what we want to do with the candle is actually right click and go to composition settings and make sure that this is kind of like tall enough so maybe we'll change it to uh, 2400 and click OK so in this case we want to center our candle and we also want to center our anchor point. So right here we have the anchor point. We can click on the pen behind tool and just center this a little bit over the entire workspace. Something like this. And then what we want to do is press P on the keyboard. And I actually already have my code copied in my clipboard, but what you want to do is alt click on the stopwatch for the position and we're going to apply a wiggle expression only for the Y. So wiggle expressions, what does it do? A uh, wiggle expression just randomly moves your object. Usually it's X and Y where you will see an object just randomly moving throughout your scene. In this case, we're only going to do Y. So it's going to up and down like a kind of a floating effect that we're going to create for our candle and it's actually really simple so I'm going to paste it right here and explain it a little bit so we have the open brackets value 0 uh, which is the X and then comma wiggle and then open parentheses 0.5 which means 0.5 means every two seconds so if it would be one it would be every second and 0.5 it means yeah half time a second so every two seconds and then uh, we're going to move it by 350 pixels and then this we're going to assign the number one which is uh, the equivalent for Y. So um, if you don't understand too much about this, it's not that hard. Usually you would see uh, the wiggle gone and see value. So we have value for X and value for Y and the value for Y is just simply the wiggle expression. Really simple. And now if we're going to look at this, you're going to see that now we have a floating candle. How cool does that look? All right, so I was actually blowing a little bit uh, to the fire to make it a little bit more vibrant and really give it that kind of look. Uh, otherwise, the fire was really still because there was no kind of air in the room. So just some soft blows to the fire will do the job. So now what I will do is go into my footage, go to my project manager and apply my composition candle right here into my shot. Of course, I'm going to scale it a little bit. So I'm going to press S and maybe scale it like 50 and make it a 3D layer. This we can move right here, then duplicate it, maybe move one over here, duplicate it and move, uh, move it over here. But this time we're going to push it into Z space to give it some depth and move it over here, duplicate it again, maybe make it a little bit smaller and kind of make variations duplicate it once more. By the way, duplicating, I'm doing it with control D on the keyboard, super simple. And then uh, we're going to drag it even more into Z space, maybe drag it and make it a little bit smaller just to give it a little bit more um, a drastic kind of change and then duplicate it all over your scene, maybe push it even further into Z space. Actually, this shouldn't be here because we have the table here and I think we're almost there so we can duplicate this one over here 
and maybe this one over here. And now, of course, you have a few things that you can do to make it look like they're really in kind of a depth. So we can click on the small ones in the background. So I'm not sure where we have that one. So we'll have to go through it. Okay, that one in the back there that you see right here. We can go for effect and we'll go for blur and sharpen and apply a Gaussian blur for this one and change it to like 15 or something or 25 to give it some blurriness or actually I don't really see any kind of difference. So 35 maybe. Okay, we're going to copy the Gaussian blur and apply it to these ones here in the background to give it a little bit of an out of focus effect um, because they're yet yeah, quite in the background. So this one over here and maybe the ones in the foreground as well because these are pretty close but I'm going to lower the value here just settle and copy and paste it okay so there we have our candles and of course if you want to change it a little bit more make them a little bit brighter you can jump into the composition brighten it up a little bit go back to your footage and you will see that they're brighter right now okay so once you've done all your candles what we'll do is select all of them and go for layer pre-compose them and move all the attributes candles scene and click OK and right here we just have to click right over here uh, which will allow us to see the 3d layers of the candles and the camera can read the information so if you click on that icon right here that will uh, just allow the information to come true and then what we want to do is duplicate the scene duplicate it and we're going for effect channel solid composite make it black and then we're going to apply a uh, glow effect the reason why we are doing a black background solid composite is otherwise the, the the glow will make a kind of special halo around the candles which won't look realistic at all so now we're going for stylize and apply a glow effect and right here we're going to lower like the threshold to something like 35 the radius to something like 45 and then lower the intensity quite a bit so it can be very subtle we can see before and after you barely see anything but it does such a big difference so we're going to toggle the switches until you see the blending mode now of this layer and we're going to change this blending mode not to screen not to add because this is going to enhance the brightness of the shot but lighten will just cover the other shot with the same color and apply the extra glow that we just applied and now you won't see any kind of weird spill around the candles if we would have done that without the solid composite you will see that if we have a normal right here we see a kind of weird spill around the edges which doesn't look natural so change it to lighten and enable well add a solid composite And actually on this wide background you can really see it the halo uh, looks terrible so that's not what we want all right so now once you've done that now the fun part starts the animation so we're going to press p on the keyboard for the camera click on the stopwatch for the position at the beginning of your shot and go all the way till the end and now push it into z space and that's where the magic happens so now we have these candles floating next through the camera or the camera floating well actually flying through the candles which gives that really cool 3d look another thing that you should do is go into your candle layers and kind of offset them so just move them around and that will also make some variation possible all right and there you have the result looks really really cool and of course you can play around with the wiggle settings if you think they wiggle a little bit too much you can all change that by going into right here change it to like 0.2 and that will make it softer and you can yeah just play around with it you can even go and render it out import it in Adobe Premiere Pro and then go for effect and use one of our presets called camera shake preset and use a low medium shot apply that to your shot and now you'll have kind of a camera shake effect an organic camera shake because it's actually recorded from real camera shake and that just makes it even more realistic in my opinion so yeah if you're interested in that I will put a link in the description and by the way if you kept watching this video until now we do have something special for you we have a 30% off for Christmas use the coupon code Christmas to get 30% off on our website link is in the description